John, congratulations on the new project, Turtles All the Way Down. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So I'll, I'll start with you, Hannah. Is a uh, how, how did it came about that you wanted to direct um, this film for yourself? Well, I had read the book and I related to the character of Aza so deeply. I, I was very, very passionate about it and was so excited that it was going to be made into a movie. I never thought I was going to get the job as the director because it was my first time interviewing to direct a movie. And I feel like I got really, really lucky, but I also know that's because I cared so deeply about it and put in the work, of course, but I had a great advocate in, in John. So John, um, you know, you, you wrote this book um, a while ago and it's been, it has been under development for quite, quite some time, but how much involvement do you actually have? And is, and how hard is it to give up your baby to put it in the hands of others? Well, it's very hard to give up your baby. Um, it, it's it's much less hard if you know that the movie is going to be good or if you have a lot of confidence that the movie is going to be good. I worried a lot with this one because the novel is so interior. It's so deep inside of Aza's head um, that I, I worried that, like, how do you turn something that's so language based into something that's very visual? And I worried about that until I saw Hannah's pitch to direct the movie and she made this little two minute video that really expressed the experience of thought spirals for me um, in a very vivid way, uh, you know, in a way that really resonated with my own experience of having OCD. And so uh, from then on, I felt like as long as we were in Hannah's hands, we were in good hands. And Hannah, how, what, what is your approach to basically make a film like this so relatable, just like, uh, you know, John Green made it relatable for young young people? Well, I was so lucky to have his source material. And one of the things I love that John does so well is he he creates these funny, happy moments in really serious subject matters. And he did that so well in The Fault in Our Stars and he did it so well in this book. So that was a huge boon. And then casting is so important. Uh, I just absolutely love our our leads of this movie. They had such great chemistry and they they made my job easy. So for me, it was just about trying to always focus on what was most important. And to me, that was Aza's mental health journey. And and John, you know, a lot of young people love your books. I'm I'm in my 50s myself. I don't even know how I could relate to uh, the younger generation. But for yourself, you write the books, you do YouTube, you VidCon and everything else. How do you relate and speak in the in their voice for, for their generation? Well, to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about teenagers when I was a teenager, um, and I don't really know anything about teenagers now. Uh, when I was a teenager, I always felt like I was like observing from afar, like this very strange, almost like an anthropological um, observation of, of this strange behavior of, of uh, American teenagers. Um, uh, you know, I, but I, what I think transcends that, hopefully, is emotion, emotion and, and emotional truth. And so I, I don't know the slang, you know, I don't know. I don't know what TikTok slang is being used in 2024, but if the emotions are true, um, the story stays powerful. You know, like Lori Holtz Anderson's book Speak is 20 years old and still powerful. Uh, Out the Outsiders, Catcher in the Rye, To Kill a Mockingbird, all those books are, are over 50 years old and still powerful. And I think they're powerful not because of their slang or the understanding of teenagers in any kind of... Um, uh, specific way, but because they understand the emotions of being young and falling in love for the first time, grappling with grief for the first time and wondering what it means to be a person for the first time. Well said, well said. And both of you raised the issue of mental illness um, for for this uh, project in both o OCD and anxiety. Um, how do you personally try to, you know, overcome OCD or anxiety if if you if you if it actually occurs? Yeah, so this is something I've lived with for my whole life. And I, I wrote the book, I think, largely in, in response to living with it for my whole life. Um, and for me, I, I need to understand what I hope Aza will understand at the end of the story, which is that um, there are good times and bad times, and neither the good times nor the bad times are, are final. Um, there's a Liberian proverb I love, no condition is permanent. And um, reminding myself that no condition is permanent reminds me that there is always cause for hope. I would say 
also how important it is to share your feelings with the people you trust and love. Uh, Aza is not alone because of that. And I feel like I'm not alone because of that. And I hope we can be a big part of destigmatizing uh, any shame that people feel surrounding it. Most excellent. One last thing. What's, what's the obsession with Applebee's? <laughs> I love an Applebee's. Um, I, I, Indianapolis is the number one. So I'm from Indianapolis. I said a lot of my books in Indianapolis. Indianapolis is the number one test market for chain restaurants in America because it's so <laughs> thoroughly and averagely American. And when I was writing this book, I was like, man, there is no, there's no place that captures the feeling of Indianapolis to me quite like the Applebee's at 86th and Ditch. So um, I set a lot of the fault in our stars at that corner, and I decided to set some of turtles all the way down at that corner too. And you've made me. It's a great. I mean, it's it's a great restaurant, underrated. <laughs> Most excellent. Well, thank you very much, both Hannah and John, um, for speaking to us for uh, turtles all the way down. Um, really appreciate this conversation. Thank, thank you so you. much.